Hey everybody, it's Aaron, Bryce, and Marty, and we're bringing you yet another Fusion 360 update. Check it out. To kick off the updates on the manufacturer side, NC Programs offers a new way to sort and post-process toolpaths. NC Programs combines the best parts of the Windows post-processor window and Mac post properties list while removing the uncertainty of the reorder to minimize tool changes checkbox. In the settings tab, you can set the program name, number, and even the output location, which is a pretty great upgrade if you're a Mac user like me. In the properties tab, all the post properties are much easier to view and set. More info about each property is available in the tooltip when you hover over the property name. Finally, the operations tab gives visibility into how operations will be ordered before post processing when the reorder to minimize tool changes box is checked. You also have the option to select or unselect toolpaths to include based on the outcome. Not only can you view the optimized order, you can also run a stock simulation of the NC program to accurately verify the reordered operations. And of course, you can post-process the NC program, which will generate the NC code without the need for a post-processor dialog. Just click on the post notification to open the code or navigate to the save location. Last but not least, NC Programs captures and remembers the post processor selection and properties. So the next time I go to post that NC program, I don't have to reselect the post processor or reconfigure the post properties. Keep an eye out for future improvements to NC Programs, and of course, share your feedback with us on the forums. For particularly complex or involved toolpaths, it can be difficult to see the cutting moves behind the retract and lead in moves. We added a section to the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen that allows you to hide or show the leads, links, and cutting moves when viewing the toolpath preview. Switching over to turning, we made an improvement to the parting operation for Swiss machines. When retract Z is set to last toolpath point, there is now a retract X parameter in the approach and retract section of the linking tab. The last toolpath point option allows the cutoff tool to remain at the last toolpath point in both X and Z. This means that Swiss machines can successfully rechuck without the stock flying out of the guide bushing, a pretty critical task. Wow, Marty, those NC programs are definitely going to help me be more efficient when posting my code. Well, in a recent update, we added the file open command to allow users to have one workflow to get files into Fusion 360 no matter what file format you receive. Well, in this update, we updated the file export command. Let me explain why. In traditional CAD tools, all translators are installed locally, which increases your download and installation time of that CAD tool. In addition, every time you import or export a file, you lock up your machine because you are translating with local resources. I'm sure you are all used to seeing the spinning wheel. Fusion 360 changes the game by having cloud translators that allow you to batch import or export. Also, Fusion 360 doesn't lock up your machine when translating large files so that you can continue working. In this update, File Export now will give you a longer list of file types. Some file translators are installed locally, like STEP, IGIS, SMT, and SAT, but others require a cloud translator. If you select a file type that requires a cloud translation, like this Inventor file format, you will get a warning that Fusion 360 will translate it on the cloud. Now you can continue to model, export out other files, or do just about anything on your computer while it is getting translated. You can check the status of your cloud activities by hitting the clock in the top right, but feel free to continue working while it's translating. Once the translation is complete, you will get a notification to open it up in Finder or Windows Explorer. Now let's import an SVG file for our logo so we can deboss our logo into this part. First, we will create a sketch on this outer face. Then locate this SVG. Now in Fusion 360, we will get an option to turn on the control point frame. We'll see what that does here in more detail in a second. But first notice that these lines are all green because the SVG imports into this sketch as fixed. Let's select everything and unfix this sketch. Now you'll notice the sketch turns blue, allowing us to edit this logo to fine tune it. In addition, we can use the control frame to be able to manipulate the splines with more precision. Now this next one changes the default behavior of sketching, so pay close attention. Previously, the default behavior was to automatically project all the edges on the selected face when a sketch was created. This lets you create dimensions, relationships, and sketch offsets without having to manually project in sketch entities. 
but this caused a lot of confusion with too many profiles being created when the face was automatically projected. Instead, the default behavior will not project in the geometry from the selected faces. You can always set to have the face projected automatically in the preferences. Alternatively, you can manually project in the other geometry as we are doing to get the edges on this face in order to create an offset sketch. Afterwards, I'll turn this into construction geometry by double clicking on the line to get the entire loop of sketches. Then right click to turn the lines into dashed construction lines. Then using the sketch offset command, I will create a sketch probe file on the inside of this face to use for a cut. Now this next update is simple, but it might be my favorite this month. When you have only one closed profile in a sketch, now when you go to the extrude command, it will automatically be selected. Shazam, that is a click saver. But when you have more than one closed profile in your sketch, you will still have to manually select the profile, just as before. In this next one, we have sort of added a new feature. Previously, you could only access the offset face command via the press pull command. For those experts out there, the functionality is still in the press pull command, but we have added the offset face command under the modify dropdown. So you can access this command through the dropdown, add it to your toolbar, or search through it through your S key on your keyboard. This tool will add a feature in your timeline that can be edited in time. Now, many of you probably have found some great workflows with the derive command. For those of you who want to learn more about the derive command, click in the top right window now. In this update, we added the ability to rename the derived asset in the downstream Fusion 360 design. In this case, we can change the name of the design for the flat pattern in our sheet metal layout. For this example, we're using the derive workflow to lay out multiple flattened sheet metal components to be cut on our plasma cutter. Then, with a simple right click, we can regenerate the toolpaths to accommodate for any changes, avoiding any rework to set up this job. Of course, if anything changes from the original Fusion 360 bent design, the flat pattern will update accordingly. Well, I know Aaron preemptively called this one out in the last update, but I'm here to tell you, in this update you will be able to break the link for multiple components at the same time. Simply hold Ctrl or Shift and select multiple components, right click and select break link. It's just that simple. Now, for this next one, I'm going to show a sketch and surface body we will use as tools to split this imported geometry into multiple bodies. In this update, we have made it so you can use multiple tools in both the split body and split face command. Previous, we would have to do this in multiple features, but not anymore. Well, that's it for me for this update. Aaron, what do you have to show? Hey there, Aaron here with updates on the data management and general design fronts. Starting with data management, I'm happy to report that we now have the ability to dump that trash. Yeah, that's right, we added the trash bin in the last release without a way to delete permanently. We did this knowingly, but decided it was better to get the bin capability to you ASAP, knowing this wasn't far behind. On the general design front, we have a couple nice updates to report on. Looking at usage and speaking with users, we found that heaps of you were trying to submit studies without defining any materials. To help overcome this, we've added a default material for all studies going forward, which, of course, can be removed if unwanted. After removing this, I'll go ahead and add some brand new materials. After TCT Asia, Autodesk announced a partnership with Arkema and Farsoon for advanced additive manufacturing processes. As part of this partnership, we've added some new additive material approximations to both the simulation and generative design workspaces. See the article in the description for more details. At the other end of the generative process, when you've completed a study and exported results, don't miss the new option to open those from the job status dialog. That'll save you from having to filter, sort, and otherwise scour for those exported results. Those exports will also lack an element of surprise in the best way possible. A little background on this, keen-eyed users have been reporting that the files shown in Explorer sometimes look different than what was actually exported. That's because in Explorer, you were previously looking at a rendering of the mesh. Now you'll actually be looking at the BREP of the final iteration to ensure what you see in Explore is what you see in the modeling workspace. As you know, we now bring loads, materials, and constraints to the simulation workspace for exported files. As such, we decided to do the same for the outcome sample files accessible in each and every data panel. This is great for those of you wanting to learn more about generative design and have access to results. And we're happy to report we've improved view consistency between the generative design workspace and Explore view. So now if you change the model orientation settings using the view cube in the generative design workspace, 
the changes will be synchronized with the Explore view. This and those view settings such as Ortho, Perspective, and the Combo version, Perspective with Ortho Faces, will also be consistent. That's all from me for this update. I'm pretty excited about NC programs. They're definitely going to change the way that I post, and I'm super pumped to be able to file export to any format right from Fusion 360. Yeah, that's awesome. And we have Fusion Academy coming in Portland this year, August 5th, 6th, and 7th. Make sure to check it out in the description. And before this month concludes, we're going to have a four-part live stream series with Brad and Angelo making the parts right here at the pier. So check that out. Hit subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. So check that out. Was Are that, we done? Was that, that was pretty it? good. I mean, it wasn't high energy, but... Hey, Aaron. What's new? Um, various things. <laughs> Are you going before me or after? Marty got new glasses. Hey, hey Marty, what what's new? <laughs> My glasses. <laughs>